everyone, it's Mr. Mirror, and I'm finally gonna start my No More Heroes Let's Play. Alright, now, uh, while the game's booting up, I'll give you some statistics here. Um, no More Heroes was released in North America on January 22nd, 2008, and Japan on December 6, 2007. It was uh, designed by Goichi Suda also known as Suda51 or Suda51 and uh, interesting fact is that uh, Goichi means uh, 51 in Japanese so that's how he came to be known over here and let's see what else uh... okay this is uh, Goichi Suda's second game to be released in North America the first one is, of course, Killer7, which is another very good game. I highly recommend it. And I'm going to select the highest difficulty here because I just kick ass like that. And before No More Heroes was released, it was rumored that uh, it would be a sequel to Killer7, but it's not. Only similarity is that uh, it was uh, developed by the same person and... There are a whole bunch of references to Killer7 here. I'll shut up while the best intro ever plays. I know a lot of gamers out there don't have much patience. At least that's what Bishop the dude at the video store said. So I'm at the register, then I realize I got no money. I was seriously broke. Why? Because I met this smoking hot chick last night at the deathmatch bar. Man, she smelled good. So being the gentleman I am, I bought her a drink. Anywho, I decided to get a job. The gig right here is actually footage there. from the so I went very I first trailer of No More Heroes. And there he was, this cat, well dressed, cool. The guy Travis is fighting is called uh, plain all the shit. Drifter. Yeah, so he's also known as Helter Skelter. Packing heat, bada bing, or at least it was supposed to be. Till she showed up. Her name? Sylvia Crystal, an agent with this Watchmacallit Association. Congratulations. You are certified as the 11th best hitman. How about getting rid of the 10 killers above you and aim for the top? I want to be number one. How's that? Short and simple enough for you? It's going to be a long, hard road. But who knows? Could kick ass. Could be dangerous. Could totally suck. What do you say, bro? Join me. Let's see how far we can take this. And for you there holding the Wii remote right now, just press the A button. Let the bloodshed begin. Yes, let the epicness begin. Alright, here we go. Fuckhead! Awesome. Yo, help me out here. Where's this death metal dude? Bad answer. It's game time. Breaking the fourth wall for the win. All right, time to do this. Okay, you play as Travis Touchdown, who is quite a unique assassin. That he's a, an otaku and a pro wrestling fan. He fights with a bean katana, not a lightsaber. Bean katana. Okay, now, the way these ranking fights work out is that, uh, first of all, you fight several of the assassin's lackeys or henchmen. Then you can the sequence where you, where you talk to Sylvia over a cell phone. That's the girl in the intro. And the thing is, uh, 
when you talk to Sylvia, her, uh, you can hear her. You can only hear her through the we the speaker of the Wii mode. You will not hear her speech through here. So what I'll do is I'll do my best to impersonate her voice, and I'll put the text of her conversation up on the screen here. Okay, now, the way you fight these enemies, mainly with your bean katana combos. And when you completely drain a, a person's energy with a bean katana combo, you'll be a chance to perform a death blow. When you do swing the Wii in the direction of the arrow, and that should instantly kill the enemy, and you'll get a slot machine. You get three symbols. You get three symbols on the slot machine will enter a dark side mode. But so there are several dark side modes. And they each power up a Travis in a different way, and they'll make you completely invincible. Right here's a weapon clash. What you do is you rotate the Wii mode in the direction of the prompt. And if you win, you'll do a death blow on the enemy. Right here is the cherry death, uh, dark side mode. What that does is that uh, every enemy around you slows down to a crawl, and you just annihilate them with combos. Okay, now um. You can actually power up your death blows by swinging the remote in the same direction again. That does what that does is called a triangle death blow. And what a triangle death blow, you can tell you executed it if a bunch of white triangles appear in front of Travis. And what that does is it powers up your death blow and it does more damage to the enemies that are not the main target of the death blow. And if you manage to get an enemy on the ground, and if they still have life left, you can perform a, an instant kill move by impaling the enemy on the floor. Another good technique to use is the Dark Step, which I just did right there. What Dark Step does is that you'll dodge the enemy, the enemy will slow down to a crawl, and you can just wail away on him. How you execute a dark step is they wait for an enemy to attack you. You block their attack, and then you uh, move the analog stick left and right. I do that pretty much throughout this playthrough. You can also do it on the bosses or the ranked assassins. You can also perform charged attacks with the Bean Katana. I'll get some detail on that later. But as you can see above the on the right side of the screen, you'll see high and low. High means high stance, you tilt the, you tilt the Wii remote up. And that uh, the low stance, you tilt the Wii remote down. And uh, high stance is you faster but less damaging attacks. Low stance executes slower but more uh, more damaging attacks. <laughs> 